All right, guys, Jack Spierko here on a Sunday afternoon. We're doing some more work on the aquatic system. And I want to reiterate, when I'm showing you this system, aquatic system. Aquaponic system is back there in the uh, greenhouse and quail aviary. This is an aquatic system. Some people seem to continue to struggle with that. Um, this system is simply basically a series of garden ponds designed to grow fish and grow out fish. Uh, though we do do some plant growth in it, and there will be actually this year going in up here some flood and drain stuff. It's not an aquaponic system because we have so much water here. We have absolutely so much water here that the amount of grow bed to make this actually an aquaponic system and the amount of stocking we'd have to do is pretty extreme. And I'm pr plenty happy to just leave the aquatic system the way it is and the aquaponics system back there. So what I'm doing today is I'm building these drains. I've got one installed here. And uh, I figure under the water, it may not be real clear what it is, so I've got one I'm about to install that I just built here. And I want to talk to you a little bit about today about water pressure. And in a way that we don't think about it, um, suction. So if you think about suction versus pressure, they're the same thing in reverse. And I want you to think about the fact that, see the way that water's coming out of that two-inch piece of pipe right there? Just kind of dump it out of there. Now you can see it's not even filling the volume that the pipe's capable of. But if I were to take and put a, a reducer on there and reduce that down to let's say a half inch, well the amount of head pressure we got, it'd be shooting water like way back over there by that jug. That's just the same thing that happens when you take your thumb and you put it over a garden hose. I mean every kid's, you know, every kid and big kid has ever done that. No, as you want water to go further, you reduce the opening relative to the pressure and you get greater pressure. All right. So, when we have a drain, the larger the mouth relative to the, the capacity of the pipe changes the pressure in the same direction. It, it, what we get instead of pressure out, suction in. Well, in a system like this, we don't want suction in at a high level. So what we would like to do is have, you know, two to three times the amount of opening to the capacity as possible, and it's the same kind of thing. Now think about you got you know, a half inch garden hose and you attach it to a two inch pipe and you turn the water on. The hose was shooting water like this. When it goes out of that pipe, what's it do? It kind of just drops out of there. Same thing in reverse. Well, we don't want these things clogging up. So what I've done is drilled just as many holes as I possibly could without, uh, without going completely nuts on it. And you see the end caps there are about 50% of the surface area. With two end caps right there, that's 100%. So all of this is gravy. Think about it that way. You also notice that when this sits in the tank like this, you know, it's going to be like that. That means the other side is to the bottom. So not only is it below the surface where you're not likely to get floating leaves and stuff on it, even when it's underneath and it's plugged in, I'm going to install this in just a second, even if the top does get kind of clogged up, you still got the sides and the bottom. And you'd have to get an awful lot of clogging to shut this down. Now the way these are done, we have these bulkheads right here. Pull through the side of the galvanized tank. And again, my buddy David these for me. He used an auto body hammer to flatten out these ridges here so that we get a good seal with the gasket. And we just take a handy dandy mail adapter. These are like two bucks at Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. And those screw into the back side of the gasket. You can see that's right down there. So now all I gotta do, let me roll my sleeve up so I don't get my shirt all wet here. All we gotta do now is come down here and just stick that in there and now we've got a beautiful drain sure minnows or fry could get in there i don't care if they want to take a ride out the water chute that's fine by me if they can get through that hole they can get through that pipe and they're going to go too uh, once they get in there and uh, that just keeps this water flowing and it keeps us from getting any kind of like you know leaf build up uh, to a point where we actually cause a, a loss of return this is new. I put this in this fall. This is the second iteration of it. But this system right here, and please listen to me, guys. Please, I appreciate your suggestions, but you have to understand what you're looking at here before you start telling me how wrong it is. These two tanks have been in the ground for over three years now. Three years, happy fish, happy plants, happy aquatic system. Again, aquatic, not aquaponics. And the only failure that we've had in these systems has been the return line where we get one clogging up and then the other one drains down and it overflows or it, it, it comes off at the bottom and it drains out the top tank, things like that. 
Everything else has worked perfectly. All those three tanks are an expansion of a system that's over three years old that's worked perfectly, except for the returns. That's why we went with the two inch return lines. And if you look at that, that drain that I just built, or the one that's in there, um, you might say that's a bit overkill. I mean, that's a lot of holes, that's a lot of extra pipe. Um, I mean, if you look at just that right there, that's a ton of drainage. Do I believe in overkill? I do at a point of failure. This is the only real point of failure we have. If the pump stops running, all that we do is swap the pump out. We keep an extra spare pump to be able to do that. It can stop running for a day. There's enough water here, the system's mature enough. The fish aren't gonna die just because it stops running for a day. Even in the summer, we could get by a day. We'd have time to get out here. Notice we had a failure to replace the pump. It can't over pump with the return lines we have there, the capacity of that two inch pipe versus the three quarter that's bringing the line up. There's just no way. The only way this can fail is for one of these returns to clog and then build up and start overflowing up here and draining down that pipe. As long as that doesn't happen, this system just literally can't fail. One real moving part in it, the main pump down there. We do have a secondary pump up here and that runs an overflow right there, just basically recirculating. And then it runs into this tank and runs into that. That's just to keep a good turnover here. We don't really need that with this kind of movement through the system, but you know, it's only using like, I think it's a 17 watt draw pump. It's just a little bitty pump. So that little extra assurance there. And if we do have a failure where this system, that, let's say that pump down there dies. Okay, those are two 470 gallon tanks. They have plenty of capacity. This would then stop running, drain down to the overflow height and just be sitting here. And by having that pump just run in between them, that alone is gonna give us some resiliency up here, which our smaller tanks, I think these are 170 gallons a piece, are more susceptible during an outage. So that extra pump, that's just a little bit of a kicker for us. And it'll probably be what we use to run our flood and drains up here. I'm probably gonna run uh, two flood and drains, each tank going this way, and we'll use those right there. They're 15 gallon concrete mixing tubs. They'll work just fine. We won't get a whole lot of production out of them. It's more of a filter system. We'll probably run stuff in there like watercress and mint. Uh, maybe run some, uh, what do you call them? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ar not artichokes, uh, chestnuts, water chestnuts or something like that in them. Uh, just as, a, just as a, um, a filtration aid to the entire system. Some of you also ask me, what about sediment building up at the bottom of the tank since it drains out the middle instead of the bottom? You mean like that one and that one again that are three years old. Actually, we have a pretty cool thing coming I'll show you soon that'll help us with that. Uh, but in addition to that thing, what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a slow spin um, solids filter right here so this door won't be able to come all the way, you know, the door will stop like right here. Uh, right here and we'll bring that in from the bottom and that'll come up through the top and overflow So I'll be installing that this year. That'll just make the system even more resilient But the truth is I could I could triple the number of these tanks like this if I had room for them And, and again, I've run this system three years. So it's okay. It's not gonna blow up. The fish aren't gonna die Some of you have been like, oh, you put them in these galvanized tanks. They die Well, you need to tell those fish that have been there for three years and you need to tell those fish that have been in there for three years that They're gonna die those really healthy, beautiful, colorful fish, uh, because they don't believe you. Um, is this the healthiest thing in the world to run fish in? Probably not. Am I worried about it? No. Every time you inhale and exhale, you, you process about 60,000 toxins out of the air. Uh, we grow incredibly healthy, sustainable food here at our farm and uh, using metal tanks for this system makes sense. If you notice the high production system, they're actually taking a lot of food out of back there. That's all done with, with uh, plastics and things like that. Anyway, hope this makes more sense to you. I'll keep updating you. Uh, hopefully in the next week, probably two weeks, I'll get this facade rebuilt here. Uh, I'm going out collecting pork uh, this coming weekend, so I won't have much time this week to get things done, but I'll keep up with you as I do.